started. First, I wanted to talk about a couple of um, technical changes. I guess it'd be administrative type of items. Um, if you noticed the, if you did watch the video that came up on Thursday, you'll know, notice it looked a little bit different. The reason behind that, if you are a podcaster, then you already know this, but if you don't create videos for YouTube, uh, you wouldn't be aware of this, but they are doing away with their YouTube editor, which is what I've always used. So I am in the process of learning a new video editing tool uh, that will take and replace the YouTube editor that I've been using. So that is why it looks a little bit different, so just kind of bear with me because I'm still learning this this new um, program. So, But it's coming along, and I think once I figure it out, I'll be able to do a little bit more with it. But until then, just bear with me. Um, you also are going to see um, one of the other changes that's going to happen with YouTube is if there are any videos that are unpublished, they're going to go away as of, as of September 20th. At least that's what I understand. And I have one video that was never shown. Uh, well, it was shown, but it was, um, if you remember the episode with the bookmobile, and I showed the inside of my bookmobile, the music in the background is the wheels on the bus. Well, the wheels on the bus is copyrighted, so I'm almost at the point where I have enough views where I will start getting um, advertising, which means I, I start to make a little bit of money on this. It's, it's, it's a fair little bit, I think, but um, that video would, as it stands, be unable to make any money off of it because it has copyrighted music on it. As a result, I'm going to re-edit it, and I have a piece that to put into it. It's the same, the same video, the same pictures, everything. It's just different music. But it will come through, and if you see it come up, it'll show as if it's new. It isn't. It's just different music in the background. But if I don't do this and republish it before the September 20th, it's going to go away. So that will be coming up hopefully in the next week, maybe. Um, I'm trying to get everything straightened out before the changes take place on YouTube. So that's all the information for the administrative stuff. Now we'll get to the good stuff. The... Um, I guess you technically call this a kerchief. The pattern is actually a shawl. I just made it smaller. This is called the lavender lace shawl. I have shown this one before. This is done in a lace weight yarn. It's actually the type of um, cotton yarn that you make doilies out of. The pattern is called lavender linen lace shawl. It's by Nancy Wiseman. It was a very easy um, shawl to make. It's triangular, so you could make it as big or as small as you want. And I will take this off because it's getting a little warm upstairs. We have a thunderstorm going on, so I don't have the air conditioner running up here or anything. Um, so it's getting a little toasty. But you can see this is definitely like kerchief size. You know, I could I could wear it on my head. But anyway, it's it's more kerchief size, which was all the yarn I had of this color at the time to do it with. I have made a shawl out of this pattern before and given it away to somebody, but I made it in a, um, probably between a fingering and a worsted weight. It was like sport weight type of yarn. That's about what I made it in. So, on with the, the, uh, the video. As I said, I've got a lot of things to share this week. I have a giveaway going on. I have, we have a knitting, uh, knit crate unboxing today. And I also have a free pattern to offer you guys as well. So we will get started. I did a lot of knitting while my grandkids and my son were here. Because I had put a video up ahead of time, I had two weeks of, of uninterrupted knitting. So you knew I was working on the blueberry sock or blueberry waffle sock pattern. And it is free on Ravelry. It is by Sandy Turner. It's been out for a long time. I think it's been out since, I think the date on it is like 1998. Been made by lots and lots of people. So I made not just, oh, I'm missing a sock. Oh, there's my other sock. I made one. These are just little short socks, little shorty socks. Um, because I don't tend to wear socks a whole lot other than like slippers. I wear them on my feet. So... Here's one, and after I made the one, and I went to go make the second one, I wanted them to match. 
and I was matching it with this kind of teal color here. What I didn't realize is that the teal here goes to a purple, like a purple speckly. So I, I knitted the second one, and partway through realized that the little speckly on the second row, uh, the second striping, is just real little, and then it goes to purple. So my socks didn't exactly match. They were close, but they didn't exactly match. So what did I have to do? I knit more. So we have these two actually do match for the most part. It got off a little bit on the heel, right, or the, the instep right here, but for the most part, they match. And then here is, because you can't have three socks, you're going to have four, so here's the other one. And I did try to match, wait a minute, did I show you the wrong ones? No. Yeah, these are the right ones. I kind of gave up. So they semi-match, so I have two pairs. And I did enter these in the Craft House Magic giveaway. Um, which is hosted by Ellie. She is somewhere in England. Um, she's a lot of fun to watch. She's very bubbly, and she does this gorgeous bobbin lace. She made her wedding dress. If you haven't checked her out, check her out. But she does this um, bobbin lace, and she made her bouquet. And it, she made, like, bobbin lace individual petals and then connected them together to make flowers. It was absolutely beautiful. If I tried to do that, I'd have a giant knot. I've always thought bobbin lace looked fun, but... I get my yarn tangled up. I can't even imagine, you know, getting thread, that, that fine thread all tangled up. And getting older, I mean, the bifocals don't even do it half the time. I have to look down over this. I can't imagine. I'd have to use a telescope to be, or a microscope or something to be able to see something that tiny. So anyway, they were entered in her shorty sock giveaway. So I have two pairs of socks. And I still, this is this is like the yarn that kept on giving. This was Crofter's DK, which is what the pattern, um, the pattern actually does call for DK. But um, I was using the right size yarn, the right size needles, and the original ones that I made I actually ripped out because they were huge. I could have fit two of my feet in them. I have little feet. I wear a U.S. size 7. So, um... Although sometimes my feet are really big because they fit in my mouth really well. Um, yeah, I have foot and mouth disease at times. Anyway, this is Crofter's DK, and this is what I've got left this much. I just rolled it into a ball and put the band on it. That's what I've got left. So not quite enough probably to make yet another pair, and who needs three pairs of the same socks? So this is probably going to go into a scrap blanket or something down the road. So I finished that. Then I started working. Um, I showed you in the last, I guess it was two episodes ago maybe, I showed you some yarn I bought to make dishcloths for my daughter, my daughter-in-law, and my mom. I finished the ones for my mom. Here it is here. Let's see if I can get it close enough so you can see. In the black and the white, it doesn't show up as well. There is a set of yarn overs um, here and here. Yeah, and a third one. This one has three. There's a set of yarn overs here, here, and here. Like I said, in the black and the gray and the white, it doesn't show up real well. This is a pattern that I did put on um, on Ravelry. It's funny, I just uploaded it about an hour ago, and we went out and I came back home right before it started raining, and I've already got 12 downloads on the pattern. It is free. And I will put a link to my Ravelry patterns down below in the description box. If you just click on that, it is called Mitered Lace Dishcloth. And you could use these for washcloths as well. They're about seven inches square. So you could use them for dishcloths or, um, or washcloths, whatever. But anyway, the pattern is free, and that is for you guys. Thank you for sticking with me through all this while I learn how to do youtube -y type of stuff. So um, anyway, it's out there, and help yourselves to it. Uh, don't forget to post pictures. If you do make some, it'll show up in the project pages, and I'd love to see what kind of colors you do it in. 
So, uh, yeah, don't forget to pit, post pictures of your projects. That was hard to say really fast. Anyway, uh, on with that, I also have been dyeing some yarn, and I am going to insert a couple of pictures right about here. of what this yarn looked like before I over dyed it. This was yarn that was originally in my um, in my Etsy shop and it didn't sell. It was kind of muddy looking colors. As you can see in the picture, the, the colors were okay, but they were like, I don't know, they weren't my favorite. They, they just kind of looked a little muddy. Then I'll show you when I show these because the color's still in them. This one I left alone. It looks orange. It's not. It is like a fruit punch pink. I wish colors came through better on the on the monitors and on the, the camera. It looks, it really totally looks orange. It is not orange. Huh. Anyway, it is really, oh look how orange that looks. Isn't that awful? It's fruit punch colored. Trust me. Fruit punch. So this was the speckled variegated. And if you look at the middle right here, this kind of muddied look right in here, that's kind of the color it originally was. So it still is not the greatest looking, but I couldn't I couldn't overdo with this one a whole lot. But I did put some yellow into it. And I put a little bit more of the colors right in here into it. Some some more reds little bit of grays in there. So these are going to probably end up in my cozy memory blanket. So I was just playing. So that's what came up with that one. And the purple one that originally looked kind of this color, this kind of muddyish. Like I said, I keep using the, the color mud, but it, it was kind of a grayish, purpley, lavender, blah look. So anyway, I made it darker. It's now like a plum, and then you can see here's some red. It's looking brown, but that's kind of a burgundy color. And there's some blue in here and some grays. So that's what it turned into. I didn't seal the package all the way because I'll put, I'll put up in the... Um, I'll put a card up here, the little eye that shows up. If you click on that, it'll show you a dyeing tutorial that I did a while back. But when I was doing this really dark color right here, which is a real dark kind of plum color purple, um, you wrap it in, in Reynolds wrap, you know, like plastic wrap, and put it in the microwave for two minutes. It, it kind of exploded. I had a little bit of purple color, food coloring, like all over the part of the microwave. Thankfully, it came out with a little of the... The bartender's friend scrubby stuff, yeah, it came up, but I used to dye my hair. My husband used to give me a hard time because inevitably I would spill some of it on the floor, on the counters. You know, I was always, every time he could tell when I dyed my hair because there was like bits and pieces of drippings of hair dye all over the bathroom. All the more reason to give it up. So, yeah, I, get, I got tired of dyeing my hair because every time it would start growing out and I get this white streak up through the top, I looked like a skunk because my hair was like mousy brown. So I looked just like a skunk. So I gave up doing that. So that is the two things I have been, I, those are the things I've been, I have finished with this week. But I've also had some projects that I've been working on this week. Um, one of them, I finally got back to it. This is the shawl that I was, that I'm designing. I'm still looking for a name for it. I've had a couple of suggestions that were very good. Um, the last time I showed this, let me untangle it here. The last time I showed this, this is where I was at. It is a asymmetrical gradient shawl. And it starts, starts at this end. And then we go into some diamonds and some diagonals. And now there is some diamond lace work going on. And you can see where I striped it right in here. So little bit by little bit, I've been working on that and writing the pattern for it. It's got a ways to go yet. So 
be thinking of titles or names for it that you would like to submit, because whoever submits the winning, um, whichever person submits the, the name that I, I like and go with will actually get a free pattern when this is uh, finished. So keep that in mind. That's why I was showing you a little bit about what it looks like. So gives you some ideas for naming it. Now we have a giveaway going on. I told you we got lots going on this episode. Um, Yarn and You Girl, who is Janine. Um, I really enjoy her podcast. I've been watching it probably since she started. Pretty close. Um, she lives out in, I think it's Washington State. She is a, I believe she dyes yarn as well, but she has a YouTube channel. She also has an online store, and she does pattern designs. She designed this shawl. I talked about this on Thursday. It's called the Yetka, or the Yet, Yexa, Yexa. I have a hard time pronouncing it. The Yexa shawl. And I'll put this close up so you can see it a little bit better. It has some eyelet, it has some textured spots, um, it's a triangular shawl, and it doesn't take much yardage. It's It only takes like a total of 500 yards. She did it in two colors, and she used two colors of her own yarn and you uh, yarn. So yeah, I guess she is a yarn dyer. Um, it uses a sur uh, US size 8. I have been loving that because... After doing all of that lace work with those tiny little toothpicky needles that I was using for my daughter-in-law's shawl, it feels so good on my hands to knit with something this big. But I love the shawl. Now, I'm not doing it in the two color. I'm doing it in a three color. I only brought up two of the colors to show you because I haven't added the other one in yet. But here's how far I am so far. And I love this. This shawl is gorgeous. And I love the colors. Oh, it helps if I turn it right side out so you can see it. This is like almost like a fall or camo type of colors. And then it's got this brown with some golds in it down here. The shawl pattern is very well written. I really am enjoying it. It's very easy. It's something I can watch TV and knit at the same time because it's not, it's got enough to keep you interested without like overwhelming you. And I, I didn't want to deal with anything overwhelming right now. So it's gorgeous. Every time I look at this, I think camping. It just reminds me of a campfire or autumn leaves because it's got, it's got several different shades of green. And this is uh, Koi Goo yarn. It's a, it's a painted yarn. This one is not, um, forget what this one is. I didn't bring the labels up. The other third color that's going to go in here is it picks up on the yellows that are in here and up in here. And it's, it's a tonal yellow. It has some browns mixed in with it. And, um, it is also a Koi Goo painted yarn, but yeah, I am loving this so far and it's, it's coming along really easy and I like the big needles because they're easy to manage. The brown yarn, we stopped and restarted a section of it. Um, I don't know if it's the thunderstorm outside that's going on or what, but it just like blipped for a minute. When I got into the brown section here, the, I'm actually using a um, fingering weight yarn instead of what's called for, which is DK. This It's a heavy, heavy fingering weight but this is a lot lighter, so I'm actually using two balls and just holding them together and knitting them double to make it thick enough so that, it, and you can't tell, it really is looking good. So that is my project with that. Now for the giveaway with it, Janine was very generous in that she offered one of you viewers a free copy of the Yetka, the Yet, yeah, Yexa, Yexa Shawl. So I asked her where she got this name, and she said it's from an um, Outlander. It's by Diana Gabaldon. It's one of the characters in the Outlander series. So in order to win, take a chance of winning this pattern, what you need to do is leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. That's it. Um, you will need to be a Ravelry. If you win, you will need to have a Ravelry account because 
it'll download into a PDF so that you can just print it out. So, um, yeah, this is going to run until next Saturday. So leave a comment, like I said, in the leave a comment down below and subscribe, and that will give you a chance to win the Yexa shawl. I said it right that time. Yay! So that's what's been going on with, with this so far. Now, everything's falling off of my table. I'm going to get my scissors because we have the Knit Crate box. I intentionally held off doing the podcast till this afternoon because I knew it was due to come in today. I was thinking it was due to come in today. I was hoping it was due to come in today, and it did. I got my wish granted. It came in. So I just picked this up. We went out and grabbed a burger from, for dinner, and I haven't even opened it yet. So I'm going to take my scissors, try not to cut myself. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sucking on Tic Tacs. You can hear my voice. I'm much better than I was when I podcasted on Thursday, but my voice is still, you can hear it, I'm hoarse. So my mouth keeps drying out, so I keep sticking Tic Tacs in my mouth. Okay, here we go. We're looking at it at the same time. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure about this one. It's different. There's two. It always com comes with two skeins. I can't say that this is my favorite one. This is the only one I've gotten so far that I've been kind of like, eh. Let's see. What does it say about it? This is called Groovy. Does that say Groovy to you? It's kind of got oranges in it, and it it almost looks like they took every dye pot they had and dumped it in here. That's awful, but anyway. It's got, um, yeah, it's got like every color you can imagine. It's got blues and greens together. It's got gold. It's got orange. It has another blue up here. Um... That's green and blues there. It's got black. Hmm. Let's unstain it. Let's see what it looks like. The yarn itself, let me tell you a little bit about it. It is 100% superwash merino. It's a worsted weight. Um, so it has 164 yards. And it's saying a US 6, 4 millimeter needle for doing this, which is what I did my dishcloths with. Um, yeah, it's uh, blowing it out too much. Let's unskein it and see what it looks like. Okay. Like I said, it kind of looks like they put every color from the dye pot on it. That's the other side. I think I get it, why they named it Groovy. It just dawned on me what it reminds me of. My husband used to have a tie-dye shirt that was all of these colors. And that's exactly what this reminds me of, is tie-dye. I think that's maybe where they were headed with this. I'm not a tie-dye person. Oh, well. Oh, it's even got brown. And that's It looks black there. It's actually brown, I think. Yeah, it's brown. Well, it's different. Hmm. I don't know. This one I'm not a big fan of. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It, it might turn into something. I don't know. I'm not real sure about this one. Anyway, that's the only one that I have kind of been disappointed in a little bit. So... Moving right along, since that one was, I wonder if there's any other information in the box. I should check that out. Let's see. It says, August, with summer half over, we're prepping for next season. Hats, headbands, and ear, warmer, ear warmers will be welcome. For refugees who've never seen an, auto, an Oregon autumn. 
I was thinking tie-dye. I guess that's supposed to be autumn. And I, Oregon is, or Oregon is where knit crate comes from. So I guess I was thinking that was supposed to be tie-dye, but I guess that's supposed to be autumn. I would not have put that together as autumn. So, um, yep, that's about all they say about it. And then there's the coupon codes that they include each month. Um, this box is Knit Crate's Knitology box, and it costs me 33 I think it's $33.95 a month. So, um, yeah, most of the time, this is my third time getting it. The other two times I've been really, really liking it this time. Maybe it knits up prettier than, maybe it knits up looking better than what I'm looking at it right now. I don't know. <laughs> not, not overly impressed with that one. So, we'll go on now to acquisitions. I don't have any yarn acquisitions other than the yarn I just showed you. But I did buy from eBay these little, they're iridescent. I don't dare open this package because there's 150 of these little beads and they'll be everywhere. But they're iridescent pink. There, you can kind of see them. They're kind of like baby pink, but they've got a little bit of an iridescence to them. I got those to go with my daughter's Christmas shawl. Now, if you've been watching, you know I made one for my daughter-in-law, the pattern that I designed called Banner Unfurled, and I did it with lace weight yarn and about killed my fingers with tendonitis because the tiny little, like, 2.5 needles that I was using for the whole time, and it took me forever to knit it. In fact, I've got it sitting right here, so you can see how baby fine this is. It really is. It took forever just because of the weight of the yarn that I used. So I'm not doing that this time. I am moving on. I'm using the same, I'm using lace weight yarn because I already bought it, but I happen to be looking through my stash and I have several of the same color. So I'm holding them together to make them a little bit thicker yarn so I can use a bigger needle. So the shawl calls for three different colors. So here's the first three that are going together. This one is a little teeny bit darker, but not much. These three are going together to be counted as one yarn. Then I have these three going together for another yarn. And then I have these two. Oh boy, that's really blowing it out with the reflection. That white is, there we go. Um, I only have one ball of the pink, but there's enough yarn in here that I can actually um, divide the ball up and I'll have enough for the shawl. So, all together, those are the three colors that are going to be in it. No, it's not. I messed up. The pink and white are going to be combined just because it, it's a kind of a bright pink. It's going to tone it down a little bit, and then the lighter gray, and then a darker gray. So these two will be together, and then these two with it. And then these are the little beads that don't look like they match this, but they really do, which are going to go with either, I'm not sure which one it will fall. I think it falls with this color here. So the little pink beads will go with the light gray. So that's the project for my daughter that I will be making. Then I was watching, who was I watching? Christine Kelly, who has U University. She has a podcast. And her podcasts are really interesting because she does a little research. She talked about like the softest of yarns of the different wools one time. She did another episode where she compared knitting needles. And I mean, she used calipers and compared the points, how sharp they were, how good the flex points were. They were all with interchangeable needle sets with the plastic, with the wood, with the, um, um, with the steel, and how, how good the connectors were, how good the cords were. 
It was still like watching com- consumer reports for knitting needles. Anyway, she did one with pom-pom makers, too, and she showed how to make a pom-pom. So, that encouraged me to go out and buy a pom-pom maker. I didn't want to spend a small fortune, because I really don't make pom-poms all that often. For the most part, when I make a pom-pom, it's for a baby hat. I like, when I make baby hats, I like to make the squared-off hats that have, like, the two points on the top, and then I put two pom-poms on it, just because I think it looks adorable, rather than just one pom-pom with little babies. So, um... That's kind of the only time I make pom-poms for the most part. Now I can make them easier, and they will look better, hopefully, because I usually make my pom-poms by winding it around like a book or something. So hopefully this will make them better. I got this off of eBay. You can spend a lot for pom-poms. Uh, but since, like I said, I don't make them all that often, I didn't want to spend a small fortune. I got this off of eBay, and I got it for four different sizes. I paid $2.15. The buyer I got it from was You Are Nice. I just realized what that spell is. The letter U and then A-R-E and Nice, N-I-C-E. So just looking down on it, when I looked at it and I wrote it out, I thought, that is the weirdest name I've ever seen for Evet. And then I realized why. It's You Are Nice. So if you just phonetically spell out You Are Nice, you'll find it. And like I said, I got it for $2.15, and they call it a knitting loom. It is not a knitting loom. It is a pom-pom maker, and they give instructions on the back how to use it. So um, hopefully by the next time, I will be able to um, make a pom-pom and do a pom-pom making demonstration for you. So I have to do a little practicing before I show you guys how to do that. The last thing I went and bought... In, uh, in July, I'm thinking Christmas already, but I wanted to get something ahead of time for a Christmas giveaway. So I bought some little progress keepers or stitch markers. You could use them for either. I have to put the ends on them yet, but they're just too cute. Let me hold them up and I'll show them to you a little bit, one at a time. Here's the first one. A little snowman cookie. And then we have a little green Christmas tree, and a little cookie wreath, and look at this little snow snow guy with little earmuffs on. He's adorable. So those are going to be made into progress keepers, stitch markers, or something like that. And we'll do a giveaway when it gets a little bit closer to Christmas. I kept two of them for myself. I'll show you the two I'm keeping for myself just because, yeah, they were cute. I need them like a hole in the head, but they're cute. The little Christmas tree cookie. And a little snowflake cookie. You see I've got cookies on the brain right now. I've been dieting. I haven't had a cookie in I don't know how long. Actually, a donut sounds good too, but I'm being good. Anyway, the last thing I'm going to show you, since I've been talking about socks, I thought I would get some books out from the library about socks and show you some of them. If you haven't checked out your local library for knitting books, do so, because they usually have them, and it's nice. I've, I've done that to check out a book before I go and buy it online to see if it has enough patterns, if there's enough things in there that I'm going to want to get it for. So, um, and just to see how it's written before I spend money on it. One I would recommend, now this is a DVD. The, the very first pair of socks that I ever made was using this video. This is by Nina Galati. She has another one, I think it's called Sock 2. She has several of them out. One of them she knitted two socks at a time. I apparently cannot multitask when it comes to doing socks because I started doing well. You knit like one sock and then you go across to knit the other sock and you come back, you know. You you sort of use like magic loop on steroids sort of thing for doing two at a time. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still getting rid of that cough and I get a tickle in my throat every so often. But um, I lost track of which sock I was on and one short, one sock was like this big and one was like this, so... I don't do two socks at a time anymore. 
it was just too challenging for me. I just took them off the needles, did one at a time. But I found this one was a really helpful DVD. I watched it several times. She's a really good instructor online. I mean, um, on the DVD, and I just stopped it and started it as I went. And these are just for what they call vanilla socks, which means there's no pattern. They're just straight knit pattern that's done in a uh, either on double pointed needles or magic loop or a nine inch circulars. I myself like the nine inch circulars. I didn't know if I would when I first got started. Um, I'd heard a lot of people either they either like them or they hate them because it the needle itself is only about this big, so you literally are holding like this instead of like your regular holding knitting needles. You kind of hold them like this. So I didn't know if I would like it or not, but. Once I got used to it, I really did. It was so much faster than dealing with Magic Loop, which is what I had done before. Because double pointed needles, I have the same problem with that I have with doing two socks at a time. All of the stitches ended up on one needle. I'm just, I can't multitask when it comes to actually knitting. I can knit and watch TV at the same time. Apparently cannot knit and count at the same time. The, um, the pattern I'm working on for my shawl, I have to count it every so often. I think I ripped out more than I put in the other night because I kept getting sidetracked and I get partway through counting and have to start all over again. So, yeah, it hasn't been good. So, the first book that I'm going to show you, this one was interesting. It's called Thinking Outside, Think Outside the Socks. And look at the picture of the socks on the front of it. Um, I'm not going to show you all the pictures in here, but there were a couple in here that I thought were so absolutely adorable. This one pair, they look like high button shoes. I mean, look at that. Are those cute or what? I thought they, they got little buttons up the side of them. I don't know if they're, I don't think they're like buttons for real. I think they're more for looks. I mean, they're real buttons, but I don't think they actually unbutton. They had that for like high boots too. They did, um, let's see if it's the one I showed or I pulled aside. I went ahead and marked a couple of them that I thought were especially cute. Here is some, they're like, they call them um, Celtic Pride Kilt Hose. But look at that. Who would have thought about putting like little buttons on the top? They're cute, but they've got some really interesting, unique patterns in here. So they're something definitely different. It is, it's from Knitter's Magazine Contest. So, um, again, the title is called Thinking Outside the Socks. The next one, and this book I liked because of the binding. Um, this is called The Joy of Socks. It is by Linda Kopp. But here's what I liked. It's spiral bound inside which means the pattern is not going to go flipping shut when you're trying to use it. So um, here's some here's some patterns on the back that are in there. I didn't mark any of the socks in here uh, to show you all because I was mainly, I liked it for the way it was bound. Like I said, the, the binding like this with the spiral edging just makes makes it nice for doing patterns. And then these, I've been looking for socks that are toe up because I have been thinking, I'm not normally a sock knitter, but I do wear dresses all the time, but I don't wear short little socks with a dress. And, um, but during the winter time, when your legs get cold, I thought about making some hand knitted socks, but to take them up to like my knees, like the old knee socks that you used to wear when you were a kid. I don't even know if they even make knee socks anymore. I remember wearing them as a kid, but... Anyway, these are toe up, but I thought, well, if they're toe up, I can make them as long as I want to make them and just use all the yarn up. So these are different. Again, I, it's got some adorable patterns. These are cute. These are shorty socks, but look at those with the little, little flower on the end. So, um, those are called dainty ankles. So they have some pretty patterns as well in here. Here's some with color work. I will not be doing those. I have done color work, but I'm not spending that much time on socks to do color work. If I'm doing color work and putting that much effort, it's going into a sweater. Um, and then this one is called, this, I didn't tell you who did this one. This one is by Wendy Johnson. 
I have one of Wendy Johnson's lace knitting books, which I have shared before. So I am familiar with her as a, as a knitter. And then this is the Sock Knitters Workshop. And it is by, how do you pronounce this? Yua Jostas and Stephanie Vanderlinden. I went to school with somebody named Van, their last name was Vanderlinden. But her first name wasn't Stephanie, so it's not her. Um, I have no idea why I marked that page to show you. Anyway, um, yeah, this one is a Sock Knitters Workshop. And here they are using the dreaded double pointed needles that I don't touch. Then I found one book. I've been in the mood to sweater knit lately, and I have that Barton cardigan that I started like way back. If you look back in one of my very beginning episodes, you'll see it. It is literally cables all the way around. And I put it down over the summertime just because it was so intricate, you could do absolutely nothing else but look right, right at it and the pattern. It has like six different charts that you have to look at. You have to look at the front, the back, the gusset, the side. Yeah, it's very involved. It's beautiful, and I like what I'm getting out of it, but it's, it's, I needed to be able to concentrate with it. So I put it away for the summertime, but I'm thinking it might come back out because I would love to get that done for this fall. So I'm in the mood for picking my sweater back up. But then I saw this pattern and I thought that was really, really pretty. It's kind of knit going up and then goes across. If you can, oh, well, I'm looking at it backwards. So it goes up and across. So it's kind of knit in a different direction. So um, there was other patterns in here that I really liked, but that one stood out. The book is by Doreen Marquart. There it is, Doreen Marquart. So, um, and I like sweaters that just button at the top that don't. I never button my sweaters all the way down. Um, they usually just hang open. So that is what I have been doing this week. And... I guess that's it. The sun is coming out. I guess the thunderstorm figures the podcast is done. So now the, th the storm ends and the thunder has stopped and the sun comes out. Oh, well. Anyway, that is it for this week. Don't forget if you would like the free dishcloth pattern, I will put the link in it down below. And if you would like to be entered to win the Yexus shawl to, um, Leave me a comment below. You can comment about anything, but leave a comment below and be a subscriber. And that will get you entered. And next Saturday, I will be doing the drawing for that. And Janine, if you're watching, thanks again for that shawl. And I love it. And uh, hopefully I'll have more of it done for next week. So that is it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks once again for stopping by. And I'll see you later. Bye.